Hi everyone, welcome to Python tutorial for computational chemistry. Today we will quickly go over the concept of for loops in Python. And similar to other programming language, for loops are used to tell the computer to perform a task multiple times. So in other words, it's used to iterate over a sequence of variables and perform some commands you provide during your, your for loop. And the structure of for loop in Python is just a statement for a variable in a list of variables, you ask Python to perform some stuff using this variable. To make it clear, let's have an example. Imagine that we have an enzyme and we mutated this enzyme to multiple variants and then we calculated the energy of each variant to check the stability. And we got the outcome of energy for each variant which is like this in kilocalories, like 100 for the first variant and then minus 75 for the second variant and etc. But we are interested in representing this data in kilojoules, not kilocalorie. And as you know from the basic chemistry, is one kilocalorie is equal to 4.18 kilojoules. So simply by mathematics to convert this energy into kilojoules, we have to multiply every single element in this list by 4.18. And the best way to do that is using a for loop to do the boring job by multiplying every single element by the value that we are interested in. So let's write our first loop. Let's first run this stuff so that we can get the energy list. So we will write very simple for loop. I will tell Python that for i, which is the variable for each variable, i in energy. By the way, this could be anything you can call. You can call for an enzyme, but it should be also here the same. For a variable in energy, please create a new variable called kilojoule, which is equal to the old variables multiplied by 4.18, and then print me the outcome. And two more, two very important things with for loops is the colon, because it determines the end of your statement, and the indentation. Because there is no exit or stop in, in Python, they had to find a way so that Python would understand that this is the for loop commands and when it should stop. So once the indentation starts here, this is what we are telling Python to do during the for loop. And once it ends and you start writing from here, so we are telling Python that the for loop is over. Okay, so let's run it. Cool. So you see, 100 is multiplied by 4.0. 184 and etc. But the outcome is not saved in Python yet, so imagine that we want to get this outcome to use it in subsequent computation in our code. So we want to save this outcome into a list. And as we learned in the previous lesson in lists, that we can create an empty list and append anything we have into that list. So simply we could modify this code by creating an empty list called energy in kilojoules. I'll keep it empty. And then I will repeat the for loop for i in energy, kilojoule equal i, blah, blah. And then I will add a single line, energy kilojoule append my new values here. Let's try and see what will happen. Cool. And when you hit energy kilojoule, you will get the new variables stored in this, in this variable as a list so that we can use it later. Cool, so now we get the basic idea of for loops and and how to append the outcome into, into a list so that we can use it later. One more thing is that we can choose from our uh, variables using for loop by making choices or logical statement. As you know from basic computer science, we have equal to, is two equal signs and then not equal to and greater than and less than and etc. So imagine that we want to pick up the stable variants from our list. We had the variants here, as you know, the ones that has low energy, less than zero, it would be the most stable variants, and the one that has positive energy could be less stable. So we want to pick up only the uh, negative ones. So with them, we, we can do this easily by, uh, by a for loop. So we can create, again, an empty list called stable variants, so that we will append the outcome of the for loop to this list. 
and then we we repeat the same way but we tell python another statement which is if i less than zero means negative append the value into my new list and then print it and be uh, careful indentation again that I start another indentation because I'm starting another condition okay so let's say let's see what will happen okay so I picked only the negative one which are stable or which I'm interested in let's try if we say if I equal to zero it's an empty why because all of our variables in the energy were not equal to zero okay what else we can do we can do a multiple selection like logical selections and an or or and so I want to check or select the variables from my energy list which is our less than zero and not equal to zero what are you expecting from this so less than zero we have one two three and not equal to zero we have one two three so it should pick all pick up all of them so let's see yeah because <laughs> we said and so it pick only the negative but if we say or we can pick up all of them okay so you can make multiple selections or using logical selections that's a quick introduction to for loops i mean you can try many exercises on that and then we will continue in another video and thank you